Hey guys, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick. In my last video, I promised that I'd make a video to talk about what a Roth IRA is. So here we are. Today we'll go over what a Roth IRA is, how it compares to a traditional IRA and a normal taxable investment account, the contribution limits that a Roth IRA has and how to get around them, and any penalties that you might see by pulling your investments early. So first, a Roth IRA is an individual retirement account that sees tax-free benefits both in growth and when you withdraw the money. According to the rules, if you're 59 and a half or older and you've had your account for over five years, you can pull all the money out without being taxed. They're as easy to open as a normal investment account and many brokerages do them. Personally, I went with E-Trade to capture their promotional $100. So what are the taxes that you avoid by investing in a Roth IRA? The first is short-term gains and those are taxed as your ordinary income. That tax rate is higher than the long-term rate that they charge. Some examples of short-term gains are the money you make from selling a stock that you held for under a year and also the dividends that you receive. Otherwise, if you hold a stock for over a year before selling, those gains are taxed at a rate between 0% and 20% based on your annual income. But most people fall within the 15% range. See, in a Roth IRA, you contribute your money post-tax, just like a normal taxable investment option. So how much benefit are we actually talking here? Here, I create an Excel spreadsheet to show the difference between a Roth IRA and a taxable investment account with some starting parameters. So we have a starting balance in each account of $6,000 and we contribute $6,000 each year. We assume an average annual return of 8%, which matches the 8% average annual return of the S&P 500 and a tax rate of 20%. Now, everything in yellow are parameters that you guys can switch around because I'm going to be linking this document in the description below. And you can see as time goes by in this chart to the right, the difference only grows larger and larger between the two accounts. And if we look at 45 years into the future, the difference is nearly $1 million. And this is only due to holding the money in a different type of account. We're not contributing any more or taking on any riskier investments. It's just the account type. And this difference only grows larger with a higher tax rate or a higher average annual return. Even if you pass away before you see any of your gains, your beneficiaries are able to take the money out of your account tax-free, which isn't true with many of your other assets. Okay, so now that it's clear the benefit of avoiding taxes, how do we decide between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA? The main difference is when you decide to pay the taxes. In a traditional IRA, the amount you contribute is a tax write-off against your income. So that means you'll have more money today to invest to grow your account. This is compared to a Roth IRA that you contribute post-tax dollars with. The investment income grows on top of that, but when you go to pull the money out, you don't have to pay any tax. Because the government isn't expecting any taxes from your account, they don't force you to take withdrawals at a certain age. See, in a traditional IRA, you have to start taking money out at age 70 and a half. So which is better? It depends on two main factors, how much money you expect to be making in retirement and what you expect the income tax rate to be when you do retire. If you plan on making more money in the future and you hold that tax rate consistent, then you should be going with a Roth IRA option. Or if you don't plan on having as much income in retirement as you do now, and you keep that tax rate consistent, then you should go with the traditional IRA option. Personally, I don't see a world where the government lowers the tax rates and I wanna be making money in retirement. So I went with a Roth IRA. But again, both options are better than putting your money in a taxable investment account. I'm sure you're asking yourself now, Nick, there's no way the government's this generous to allow us to keep the investment income that we make on investments we buy ourselves. And unfortunately, you're right. There are some limitations to the benefit. Here, you can see the contribution limit breakdown. Not only are you limited to $6,000 a year, but if you make too much, the government doesn't feel the need to give you any additional tax breaks, which I guess is fair. I'm attaching the link below to this chart and also an online calculator on NerdWallet that calculates how much you are able to contribute in different scenarios. And now you're saying, but Nick, I'm already incredibly successful and you told me there's a way to get around these contribution limits. Wouldn't you know it, the well-educated found another way to avoid paying taxes. But that's why this video is so important. This is something that anyone can do if they take the time to learn about it. 
So if you make more than the allowed income and you still want to invest the $6,000 into a Roth option, there is a way around it. And it's called a backdoor Roth. And I feel slimy just saying it, but that's actually what they're called. So here are the instructions to do so. First, you'll open up a traditional IRA, which isn't restricted with the same income limits as a Roth is. Then you convert your traditional IRA into a Roth and your IRA administrator will have the paperwork to do so. If you decide to go down this route, you will have to pay some taxes. See, when you opened up your traditional IRA, you contributed with pre-tax money. But now when you're converting it to a Roth IRA, not only do you have to pay taxes on your contributions, but also any investment gains that you made during that time. This is a good time for a disclaimer. I am not licensed to give any financial advice and any information that you hear should just be a starting point for you to do your own research to find out what works best for you. Any brokerage account would be happy to answer any investment questions that you may have. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about the best time to open an account. It's right now. Actually, do me a favor and finish the video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, and then open an account. 2019 is about to end, but that's not the deadline to contribute to the accounting year 2019. You'll have until April 15th of 2020 to do so. But don't wait until April 15th if you just have the money laying around. You have to think about the time value of your own money. So I created this spreadsheet to show you the benefit of investing as soon as possible. Let's take a look at contribution year 2019. If you invested $6,000, the Roth limit, on 1-1-2020 instead of the investment deadline of April 15th of 2020, your money would have an additional three and a half months to grow. I assumed an 8% interest rate here, and for the $6,000 that you invested, you would earn $136.20. The benefit of contribution year 2020 is even larger because the time is much longer. If we invest on 1-1-2020 instead of April 15th of 2021, we would have 15 and a half months for our money to grow at an 8% rate, which would net us a benefit of $627.10. Altogether, investing on January 1st of 2020 instead of the two investment deadlines would earn us $763.31. So the only downside of keeping your money in a Roth IRA versus a taxable account is liquidity. If you're younger than 59 and a half, and for some reason need to pull out all of your money, you may be hit with penalties and taxes. But there are some exceptions. You'll always be able to take out any of your contributions tax and penalty free. It's only the investment income that you make in the account that can be subject to taxes or penalties. But these two can be ignored if you're using the money for the right reasons. For example, you can use up to $10,000 to pay for your first home. You can use the money on qualified education expenses, in the event you become disabled or pass away, and for any unreimbursed medical expenses or if you're unemployed for health insurance. Anything else is subject to a 10% penalty and taxes. Okay, so I know we covered a lot today. So if you have any questions about it, please leave a comment below and I'll either answer them or find a link to a good article for you. If you enjoyed this video and wanna keep learning, or if you wanna follow the trades that I'm making in my own Roth IRA, please hit the subscribe button and follow me on my journey. I'll see you next weekend for another weekly recap.